golden eagle's eye view of its natural habitat, scanning the moorland for its natural prey, the blue hare. Waiting on in this way is just one technique an eagle falconer uses to get his birds hunting. The other is pursuit. Roy is up in Scotland's Angus Glens. It has taken weeks to get all the birds flying fit ready for the trip, and they're going to need to be. The weather has turned and the conditions are tough. Uh, this can be the joys of the Scottish Highlands. I hate to think what wind we've got at the moment, but we are struggling to stand up. I mean, luckily I'm a bit of a weeble, so I always pop back up, but it is absolutely blowing a gale. So uh, what we're gonna try and do is get over the rise and hopefully find some hares in the lee of the hill. It's not the best way to fly an eagle because it's always best to try and fly the eagle into the wind. So they've got the maneuverability this way. They're going to be flying across the wind and he's going to lose some of his maneuverability. But we'll give it a go and see what we can do because it is just absolutely blowing a hoolie over the front of these hills. And unfortunately the hares have all moved out of the wind and have come over to these sides of the hill. So it's really our only option for the moment until the wind dies down a little bit then we may be able to get a bit of waiting on in a few more secluded quarries. Ah! Roy's younger eagle, Baby, is flying today. They sit high above the dogs, controlled by Bex and Forbes. The hares are here, but once they get a charge on up the hill, the eagle's advantage is lost. We witness some incredible acrobatics. That is just where eagles come into their own in this sort of terrain, in this environment. But again, this is what they've evolved to live in. Um, when you think that that's over a kilometre at flight um, and in gale force winds, they are just phenomenal. But the interesting thing is the through tails as well. We found that flying those in these conditions, they match the goldies for performance. They are just brilliant, brilliant creatures. So again, because he's conditioned, with the training that we do, we don't need to open up every hair to give them a reward. So we put half the reward on, and then we do the trade up. One foot, two feet, pair away. And then we're ready to go again. Good boy. And when you're flying in these conditions, and with a bird that has been conditioned in the training so you can get in trade them off and then you can go and start again it does allow you to start taking a reasonable number of hairs and over the last couple of weeks we've actually managed to catch enough hairs to be feeding eight or nine people back in the lodge of an evening so it's uh, as a from falconry as a way of putting food on the table this side of it really does work very well and hares are just absolutely beautiful to eat but again such a fantastic looking creature they are just perfectly matched as predator prey now it's time to head back down the glen with enough light left to fly the goshawk rabbits are plentiful here and live on the lower slopes she's been working well again on the rabbits but it's just trying to make it's just trying to make the flights a little bit more challenging because obviously now she's another year older 
Ah. She's a little bit more experienced than she really is mopping up the rabbits without too much of an issue. So, uh, I mean, we've been doing a, a little bit of pheasant hawking as well at home. But it's uh, when you've got the weather like this and we just can't get out anymore on the tops because it was just blowing an absolute gale again. So uh, we've just come out for a, a quick finish up on the rabbits down here. Uh, it's always a good bit of sport. to fly but it's too much. So the last few weeks whilst we've been in Scotland I've been using some of the shooting pin clothing and because I'm sitting on the Argo I'm not walking around then that's that's when I'm at my worst normally and you can get absolutely frozen when you're sitting on the top of a, a, a hill and you're just in blasting gales um, and you've got blizzard conditions coming through it can freeze you to the bone but I felt comfortable all the time and that's what it's all about it is as simple as that it's never the wrong weather it is just the wrong clothing. Day three of filming and Roy's last before heading south. The snow has settled but the wind has dialed down enough of a notch for some waiting on. We've had gale force winds we've had blizzards we've had heavy snowfall and we've had glorious days as well but today we're cracking out and it looks like the sun is just breaking through up on the tops here. I'm hoping we can get to a wind facing hill and get Cappy up. So this is what Cappy's always done. And if you can find a nice wind facing hill with some thick heather beds underneath it so you can work along the tops and then flush the hairs underneath him. And then we should get some lovely stoops. So hopefully we'll get the camera on the back of him as well. And we should get some fantastic footage. But as I say, we've got a, a particular bit along here. If the wind is hitting it just about right, then we should be able to get him up, I hope. <coughs> ah! Well that worked, we were coming back across to come back up to the cars and as we were going up we flushed a hare that was running back up over the top of the mountain and where Pappy had got the elevation still he was able to track back over the top um, with what wind was there and take the hare so hopefully we've got that on his onboard camera and we can see what happened. That was a bit of a nicer flight. Hopefully we might get another one because I think the sun is fading on our last day in Scotland. That was a nicer flight. It is just a fabulous, fabulous place, but when the winds are against you, it is just harsh, really, really harsh. The way that the hares and the way that the grouse have evolved to live up here, and again, the way that the eagles predate upon the hares up here is something spectacular. Leave the glens where we started, flying on the back of an eagle, enjoying a Scottish sunset.